Well, um, so today's turned into quite an eventful day. 27 kilo kingfish on a shore dive, don't mind if I do. Welcome back to another episode of Fishy Thoughts everybody. This is episode 2 out of, don't know how many. This episode right here, as mentioned in the intro, is about a 27 kilo kingfish shot on a shore dive. As per the last episode, and of course every episode, the exact location of this will not be mentioned. I will be deleting any comments down below. It is of course, if you've dived the spot, fairly obvious where it was. Now this weekend I'd actually set out to camp. I'd made a bloody early start just to head out for a spot of skimboarding in the morning. Now this particular spot is a 15, about a 15 kilometer round trip uh, hike. It is not easy. I took too much gear. I was solo, so safety was a bit of a premium. No, no mobile service, um, no people, no really nothing out there. Oh boy. <laughs> You ready to go? Now upon returning to the van, um, I think it was probably about midday at this stage, early March, pretty bloody hot as you'd expect, beautiful day. Um, I'd stopped off quickly at a shop to pick up some food and then made the trek back out. Once I got there, I paid for my camping for the night and sort of just settled in, really didn't know what to expect from the afternoon and um, just waited on a couple other people to turn up. The guy I dove with that day, I can't actually remember his name, he was staying at my parents' place um, with family, and I think his level of experience was he'd got craze and power before, but never actually shot a fish. So we suited up anyway, got in the water, um, I gave him this particular spot as, as can, be, can be quite sharky, it seems to have all the sharks or no sharks, that's typically how it works there. Um, every time I've dove, this is the same spot where you swam with a great white there a couple of years ago, and um, but can be super super fishy. Uh, we've never actually done that well on, king, on the kingfish front before, but it's always super super fishy, and the, the, the pretty much guarantee with this is that you can always pick up quite easily a kahawai or blue mau mau. There's usually a johnny or two, so you, you know you're sort of guaranteed to get a good good feed of raw fish um, and quite easily. Now on this particular day you can tell by the clips already that the viz was exceptional for a shore dive. Um, super fishy. One thing to note, well actually two things. One, that my mate's gun that had been sitting in storage for a little while, the rubber broke before we pretty much got anywhere. So we're down to one gun and also my gun bungee broke at the car park. So those are sort of two limiting factors of the dive. But we headed out. Managed to pick off a couple of the, the before mentioned species and it was sort of at about this time um, that I noticed a few changes in the Kahawai schools. I've never done well in kingfish in this spot, it's actually not from my, from all my diving here I've never actually done that well kingfish on this particular spot. I've done pretty well further out but this particular spot it's been quite rare for myself to see kingfish here. Huge amounts of bait fish as you've seen and um, certain behavior was suggesting that something was around as I mentioned earlier it could be sharks could be could be a kingfish hadn't seen anything so, at this stage. With the car line they're all moving quite slow so you just sort of track go down there and track the gun like with them, yeah. not really aiming at one and then when one's about where you're pointing you just have to deviate like a little bit and shoot. <laughs> Parts of the Kahawa school were moving very sedately, sort of like they weren't under a threat, weren't under attack. Um, but then it was at this, probably about this stage of the dive that I noticed one side of the school was starting to look very agitated, it sped up its tempo and was starting to move around like something was here. I mentioned to my mate that I felt like something was here, we swapped guns because it, it, as I mentioned earlier we were sharing a gun um, and that it was about this time that I saw the kingfish come in on the back of him when, when we were sorting out a, a fish of his. Is 
see how it looks like some of them have picked up tempo. That usually means that yeah, there's something here. It all happened pretty quickly in real time from there, so I'll let the clip roll in real time. Oh, there he is. Look, 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 look. Keep an eye out for teeth, bro. Okay? Who's a good king? All right, now I felt like I'd hit the fish with a really good shot. Right behind that peck fin there, where, as mentioned earlier in the video, we only had one gun. Now, um, had to really make the shot count. Felt at this stage that I'd really made that shot count. Another thing to note was that because my gun bungee had broken earlier in the day, I wanted to try to keep the fish on the mono. I wanted to try to keep pulling on my mono. I didn't want to let it go back to that gun bungee area and just have a, a possible point of, uh, for the line to break. So one thing here was I was going to keep as much tension on the fish as I possibly could, providing the shot stayed good. And the other thing, of course, was line management, as you can see by the big death circles the fish was doing. It's quite big, bro. I'm just gonna have to tire it out. Get get my float line and we'll start swimming that way. Cause we're gonna we're gonna get pulled way out. We need to start moving all the gear that way. I was absolutely buggered from the day I just had, so um, I wasn't in probably absolute premium fighting ability, but at the end of the day I was absolutely wrapped to finally get this fish in my hands. We pretty much just swam it back to the shore, gear all tangled, I was I like, I was free of the gear, but the, just the float line was an absolute hell of a mess. I'm tangled like zuggery, so... fish yeah as soon as I grabbed it the first time I was like oh fuck okay 
pretty much swam it back to shore, gutted it, gilled it, took all the unnecessary stuff out of the fish and headed off home. Kind of ruined the, ruined the camping trip because I didn't bring enough uh, bin for that size fish. I'd brought a bin with me but only like a bag of ice and, and sort of was only prepared for smaller fish. So I had to cancel the night camping and um, shot home. Now that's it for the second episode of Fishy Thoughts. Feel free to let me know what you think down below. I was of course wearing uh, a pair of my own fins that I make as well as a gun, which I will leave all appropriate links to certain videos and information down below. Uh, you can probably click a card or two up top in this video to take you along to any, any sort of applicable information. Stay tuned for any upcoming episodes. I'm Sam Price, I'll see you at the beach.